Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and we are gonna talk about the perfect fly rod. Does it exist? If you would have asked me 30 years ago, easy answer, nine foot five weight. Yet, I rarely fish that anymore. So what's changed? We're gonna talk about that today, plus I'm gonna share with you the three fly rods that I think are perfect, at least for me. Stay tuned. Quick background, 30 years ago. My first fly rod was a seven foot, six inch five weight. I loved that rod. It was a Christmas gift and I used it basically for everything. Trout, panfish, bass. I had one rod. That was my rod, period. But I started reading magazine articles. I don't know, watching that TV show. I mean, watching VHS tapes. Yes, I watched them. So I was doing all of that kind of research as a young teenager and I realized the perfect fly rod existed. It was a nine foot five weight. So you can imagine my disappointment when my dad got us two new fly rods, at least they were new to us. And my fly rod was an eight foot six inch five weight. And you would have thought my world was over because everybody said the nine foot five weight was the rod and mine was six inches short. <laughs> that doesn't sound too good, but let me move on from that and say, gosh, did that really make a difference in my fly fishing? Absolutely not. So now let's kind of fast forward. I don't use an eight foot six inch. I don't use a nine foot five weight. I don't use those rods at all. Let's talk about what's changed at least in the industry and from manufacturers and from us as consumers. To make it very simple, people love options and manufacturers have taken notice. I mean, there are so many rods out there just for a specific niche in fly fishing. I'm talking about trout spay. There are rods to throw streamers dry fly rods, Euro nymphing rods. Heck, there are even rods out there that break down into six or more pieces so you can backpack into the wilderness. Basically, ask for it and you shall receive. Back to my dad. His favorite rod, it's a six foot three weight. He loves to fish it on small streams in Pennsylvania. I mean, there is nothing better than battling a fish on a two or three weight. I mean, it's such a great fight. But now, show up on a lake with that rod on a windy day, you have no business being there. So it gets to the point that all these rods designed today, or at least a lot of them, are out there for a specific purpose or a specific location. It's kind of cool to think about that, which makes it very tough sometimes as a consumer because we have all of these different options in front of us. So it's my turn. I'm gonna share my three favorite rods. Basically, if you see me fishing, you know, once this video is being recorded, you're gonna find me with one of those three rods in my hand, hopefully catching fish. So without any further ado, let me take you through some of my favorites. Let's start with trout, and I'm going to talk about a rod design for European nymphing, but not just that. Now, I love European nymphing. I just dove headfirst into that rabbit hole because it is such an effective technique, and it just brings out so many different things, so many different styles, and you have to be really in tune with everything going on during those moments. So, without a doubt, I am gonna recommend all of you to at least investigate European nymphing if you haven't already. The rod that I love, I mean, it's an easy choice. It's a 10 foot three weight made from Honic. It's called their Honic Superb XP. I love so many things about the rod. First of all, it's beautiful. It's just a beautiful green color. It's got great recovery. So after you make that cast, it wiggles and then it really straightens relatively quick. So you can be really on that drift right away. Plus it has the ability to throw a nymph and a dry fly. And you can even chuck a streamer if you have to. Um, without a doubt, it is my go-to rod right now. Now, do I also love a 10 foot six inch? Sure, I have one of those as well. And sometimes I'll go back and forth, but I can tell you for the majority of my fishing, the 10 foot three weight, gosh, that steals the show for me. For my next favorite, let's jump up a few line sizes. Let's go with a nine foot six weight. The rod is a moonshine Vesper. Now, I love this for so many different reasons. I mean, going back to the first one, it also has great recovery. I love that in every rod that I fish. It's a beautiful rod, it just looks great. There's something about the moonshine rods that just kind of differentiate from the others. I mean, maybe it's because they come with an extra tip. Not that I've ever broken a tip. Spoiler alert, I have before. But it's great to be able to have a backup just in case you're ready to go. So kind of plus one with the moonshine rod company. Some other things I love about a nine foot six weight though, you can cast them a little bit better in the wind. Go back to that lake situation I talked about. I love to throw this rod whenever I'm fly fishing on lakes, especially out of some type of a kick boat. Uh, it's great to use on large rivers. It's great to use in Montana. It's great to use in Wyoming, in Iceland. I mean, this is one of those go-to rods that I use in so many different places. Why the Vesper? 
there's something about the way they designed this one. I can throw a five weight line on it, a six weight, and even a seven weight line if I'm in a pinch. That's just a lot of versatility for one rod. So if you're interested in a nine foot six weight, I would absolutely encourage you to check out the Moonshine Vesper. My third rod, maybe this is an obvious one, nine foot eight weight. I feel like everyone's got to own one, right? <laughs> now, the one that I prefer is an Orvis Helios 3D. Uh, there's something about that all black rod with that white label. I don't know, it just stands out. Is it a little ugly? Yes, but it's also that rod that I grab for almost all the time, whenever I'm chasing striped bass, whenever I'm going after larger largemouth bass. Now, can I get by with my six weight for a largemouth? Sure, I can, but if it's a windy day or I'm tossing really large flies, I'd much rather go with the eight weight. It's gonna make it a little bit easier. What about when I'm doing some saltwater fishing? Will that fly rod, the eight weight, work out? It will at times, depending on a few factors. It's gonna depend on the species of fish you're chasing, it's gonna depend on how windy it is, and also, what size of fly are you tossing? Like right now, there's a little bit of wind while I'm recording. This will have no problem with a six or an eight weight, but once you get those major gusts, then you gotta start thinking about some other rods. But that nine foot eight weight, gosh, if I'm fishing in a lake for steelhead about to make their run, I can make such bomb casts with that rod. I mean, there is just something about that nine foot eight weight that I'm ready to roll. I mean, I'm getting ready right now as I record this to go to Iceland. I'm bringing three rods with me. And you know what three rods they are. They're the three rods I just talked about. Those three rods are going to cover all of my needs when I'm traveling. Now I know what somebody's going to ask. Tim, so you only own three rods? <laughs> Come on, no, of course not. I mean, this is an addiction for me. I'm sure it is for many of you as well. I own a bunch of rods, but I can tell you one that I rarely fish anymore. It's that nine foot five weight. It just doesn't have a place in my regular artillery, I guess, of fly rods. I still love that rod. There's something that's great about it, but it's just not one that I, I reach for on a regular basis. Now, whenever I think about other species that I chase, I mean, I just started getting involved in fly fishing for muskie. Oh my gosh, talk about an addiction. But I realized I brought my eight weight with me, it wasn't enough only because the flies that I was throwing, they were so large and that rod, it was more like chucking them. So now I'm looking for recommendations of a muskie rod. So if any of you like to fly fish for muskies, hey, shoot me an email because I need to learn about a new rod for that species. So let's get back to the title of this video, the perfect fly rod. Is there a perfect fly rod for me? There's not one, there are three, but now it's your turn. Tell me about your perfect fly rod, but don't just tell me about the rod. Tell me about what you use it for, what species, where you're located. Give us some details down below in the comment section because gosh, there are so many great fly rods out there and I'd love to hear which one really is that one that you turn to, even if it is a nine foot five weight. Thank you everyone for watching this video. If you'd like to watch more videos like this, you can check them out on my website, which is troutandfeather.com. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them down below in the comment section where you can email me. Should be showing up on the screen right now at tkamisa at gmail.com. If you're into social media, you can find Trout and Feather on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter. I am now even making these videos called TikToks. I mean, TikTok is hysterical. You may have seen some of the short videos that I've posted on my website. Uh, gosh, they are so much fun to make and I hope you enjoy them too. Well, once again, thank you ahead of time for watching this video and I hope to see many of you soon.